Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 1999 American psychological thriller film called The Talented Mr. Ripley. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. Our story starts off with a young man, Tom Ripley, playing a piano at a fancy party. Tom meets Herbert Greenleaf and his wife. They believe he knows their son, Dickie, from Princeton because of the jacket that he's wearing. Tom pretends like he knows Dickie and learns that their son loves jazz. Later, the Princeton jacket is seen being returned to a man in a car. Tom didn't study at Princeton and actually works a boring job. We then see Mr. Greenleaf ask Tom if he can go to Italy and bring his spoiled son back home. He'll pay him $1,000, which is lots more money back in the 1950s. Sometime later, we see Tom inside his small apartment. He listens to jazz music and gets ready to go to Italy. The Greenleafs are very rich people. They've paid for Tom to travel first class to Italy. After arriving in Italy, Tom meets a young woman, Meredith, and pretends to be Dickie. Meredith is from a very rich family and knows the Greenleafs' reputation. They part ways soon after, and we see Tom begin studying Italian and calling himself Dickie. On a beach, Tom pretends to bump into Dickie, and we meet Dickie's girlfriend, Marge. Tom tries to convince Dickie that they met at Princeton, but Dickie doesn't remember him. Marge asks Tom to join them for lunch, and later, we see Dickie picking up an Italian woman on a motorbike. At the end of the day, Dickie meets Marge at her house and finds Tom is there too. Tom confesses to Dickie that his talents are lying to people and impersonating almost anyone. Then, he does a perfect impression of Dickie's father and earns himself a fancy trip to Italy. Dickie is shocked to hear Tom was paid to come here to bring him back. Soon after, Dickie and Tom walk the streets and talk. Dickie says he's never going back to America. In the next scene, Tom pretends to drop some jazz records, and we see that Dickie is very happy to talk to him about his favorite music. Tom joins Dickie and his friends to sing on stage in a jazz club. They have so much fun. The next day, we see Dickie typing a letter to his father. Tom and Dickie have made plans to scam money from Dickie's father. That way, Tom can stay in Italy and party with Dickie. Later, Tom practices his impression of Dickie. Several weeks later, the three are on Dickie's boat, and Dickie shows Tom how to sail it. They plan a trip to Venice and Rome as they talk and make fun of how Tom doesn't know much. Back on land, March tells Tom about how she met Dickie, and they bump into Silvana, Dickie's mystery woman. Tom and Dickie walk around, and Silvana tells Dickie she needs to talk to him. After a jazz bar, Tom gets Dickie to write a postcard. This way, he can copy Dickie's handwriting, even his signature. As he flirts with Dickie, we find out that Tom might not like girls. The following day, we see Tom and Dickie are in Rome, and we're introduced to Dickie's old friend, Freddie. After partying with Freddy, Dickie meets back up with Tom. Dickie doesn't sound happy that Tom is wearing his clothes, even though he said it was okay. We see that Freddy doesn't like Tom. He makes fun of him for taking money from Dickie and his father in front of Dickie and Marge. Marge feels sorry for Tom, and while on Dickie's boat, she tells him how Dickie is towards new people. It's also no surprise that Marge knows Dickie is a cheater. We also find out that Tom can't join the ski trip they've been planning, Freddy said he doesn't like Tom on the trip, and you can feel the tension. Later on the boat, Freddy tells Dickie to come back to Rome with him, as there are lots of ladies there. Marge hears this and goes down under the boat. After they finish sailing, they return to a celebration. Here, things get so wrong as Silvana has drowned, and we are shocked to see her taken away as her mother and fiancé scream. Tom asks Dickie what's happening, and Dickie gets angry and walks off. We come to find out that Silvana was pregnant by Dickie, and Tom promises he'll keep their secret. Sometime later, they get a letter from Dickie's father. Tom is no longer needed, and they won't pay any more money. Tom asks for Dickie's help, but he says it's over. They had a good run, but it's time for their last trip at a jazz club in San Remo. We see that Tom is obsessed with Dickie as he watches him on the train trip to San Remo. When in San Remo, Dickie realizes that Tom has been pretending to like jazz, and he never even went to Princeton. Then he tells Tom he'll take a boat out tomorrow and look for a new house. The next day, Dickie takes Tom out to sea on a small boat. Tom wants to move back to Italy in a year and share a house with Dickie. This isn't going to happen, and Dickie tells Tom he's going to marry Marge. They argue, and it gets pretty tense as Dickie slaps Tom around. Tom can't take it anymore, 
he hits Dickie over the head with a paddle, which cuts his head badly. Dickie screams as Tom beats him again and again with the paddle. Finally, Dickie has stopped screaming and we see Tom climbing back to land as the small boat sinks. That's the last time we see the real Dickie. At the hotel, Tom is mistaken as Dickie. He forges a letter to Marge and uses Dickie's signature. He lies to Marge, gives her a goodbye letter, and tells her Dickie has run away to Rome. Marge thinks it's her fault and agrees to go with Tom and talk to Dickie in Rome. Back in Rome, Tom checks into two separate hotels. We see he's forged Dickie's passport as he checks in as himself and also as Dickie. Then he calls and passes messages between the two hotels, so it looks like Dickie is still alive. In the next scene, Meredith bumps into Tom, who's shopping. She still thinks he is Dickie, and they walk around Rome talking about Freddy and the ski trip they have planned. Tom nervously asks if Freddy is in Rome, and also tells Meredith he's single again. Tom and Meredith start to flirt, and we see that Tom's scam is working. He even uses a fake passport and Dickie's signature to take out money. Later, Meredith takes Tom to the opera, and they talk with a group about Freddy. Tom runs into Marge and one of Dickie's old friends, Peter. Tom switches back to using his real name, and Marge looks very surprised to see him. She asks after Dickie, and Peter almost bumps into Meredith. They plan to meet up at a cafe the next morning. Then, Tom quickly leaves with Meredith before his cover is blown. After taking Meredith home, the next day, Tom makes plans to meet her at the same cafe just before Marge and Peter. Tom hides and watches as Meredith, Peter, and Marge see each other at the cafe. It gets awkward when the girls think that Dickie is coming. No one knows Tom is actually pretending to be Dickie. He even goes and talks to Marge and Peter just after Meredith walks off. Tom's very good at acting and living a double life. It's Christmas time. Tom's moved into a nice apartment and bought himself expensive presents. One night, Freddy visits him and questions him about Dickie. Freddy knows something is wrong and even says Tom now looks a lot like Dickie. He realizes something is very wrong when the landlord calls Tom Dickie. Tom instantly hits Freddy over the head with a heavy statue and drags him into his car. His body is eventually dumped in the woods. The next day, the police visit Tom and tell him not to leave Rome. Freddy's death sounds suspicious and Marge asks Tom what happened. Tom lies and says that Dickie hit him earlier. He takes Marge past the hotel with the police outside and says that's where Dickie is. Then Tom drives home and is met by photographers who call him Mr. Greenleaf. The police from earlier follow Tom into his apartment and continue to question him. They found the sunken boat and tell Tom that Marge is on the way to see him now. After the police leave, Marge talks through the door, thinking it's actually Dickie, and says she's leaving him. To clear himself, Tom writes a fake note as Dickie to Tom. He pretends that Dickie is taking his own life and then runs away to Venice. In Venice, Tom meets up with Peter and they go to the police to clear Tom's name. While waiting, Tom is scared to hear they've sent someone from Rome to talk to him. They go into a room where Tom is questioned and asked if he killed Freddy and then killed Dickie. The inspector then gives Tom the notes he wrote pretending to be Dickie. We know what this note means. Later in Tom's new apartment, we see Tom and Peter talking. Peter doesn't believe Dickie would take his own life, and Tom starts to flirt with Peter. Some time passes, and Peter and Tom meet Marge. She tells them Dickie's father is coming, and he's hired a private detective from America. Later, Marge is surprised to see Tom's huge new apartment. He's doing very well for himself. The next day, Marge takes Tom to meet with Mr. Greenleaf, who's also surprised at how good Tom looks. The private detective is in San Remo, and Mr. Greenleaf asks Tom about Dickie. Later on, we see Mr. Greenleaf reads the letter and talks with Tom about how disappointed he's always been with Dickie. That night, Tom has nightmares about Freddy and Dickie. He wakes up, hears Peter and Marge outside, and lets them in. After talking, he gives Peter his key. Later that night, Marge is shocked to find Dickie's rings in Tom's apartment. He promised to never take them off. Things start to get scary as Tom talks to Marge about Dickie. We can see he has something in his pocket. His hand is bleeding as Marge backs towards the door when suddenly, Peter opens the door. This saves Marge's life, but Tom lies and accuses Marge of purposely hurting him. In the next scene, things look really tense as Tom meets the private detective in a room with Mr. Greenleaf and Marge. The detective talks with Tom alone 
but still doesn't know he killed Dickie and Freddie. Dickie had a troubled past, and to keep Tom silent, Mr. Greenleaf agrees to give Tom a large sum of money. Later, outside, Marge doesn't agree with giving Tom more money. She screams at Tom as she knows he killed Dickie. In the last scenes of the movie, we see Meredith and her friends on the same cruise ship as Tom and Peter. Tom lies to Meredith about being there alone, and then kisses her. Soon after in the room, Peter confronts that he saw Meredith and Tom kissing earlier. Knowing that he can't hide his identity anymore, Tom reveals himself to Peter. He says it's better to be a fake somebody than a real nobody. The movie ends with Tom crying as he takes Peter's life. He returns to his own cabin and sits there alone, knowing that he'll be living in solitary for the rest of his life. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.